Welcome to this coastal engineering video blog on the Sussex coast. Six stops are made, from the Bright Marina to Hastings Beach, showing different measures taken to protect the coast from the environment. The Bright Marina, which was constructed between 1971 and 1979, covers an approximate area of 126 acres. It was an extremely extravagant project with several difficulties encountered during its construction. A two-month delay was caused from one storm event in September 1974, and works were normally postponed when waves were higher than one meter. It is an artificial marina which consists of two caisson-constructed breakwaters where the declared objectives of the time of construction were to provide entertainment, accommodation, and facilities to yachtsmen. There is a strong longshore drift from west to east where the marina acts as a groin and causes a wider beach updrift of the marina. The majority of waves approach from the southwest, which is why the marina is shaped the way it is in order to protect itself. The caissons are filled with concrete sand and water where large amounts of dredging were required. A spending beach is located on the inner harbour southwest of the marina in order to absorb waves that occasionally come from the southeast. On this beach, there are pteropods, which are randomly interlocking concrete structures used as armour units to dissipate forces of incoming waves through turbulence. These are also used on the east external side of the marina. Further east, where the shoreline is characterized by the chalk cliffs, investments continue for coastal defenses. In 2002, Brighton and Hope Council appointed Harbour and General a contract of £10.8 million to stabilize 1.9 kilometers of cliff and seawall as to protect the several heavily developed assets in the area. The concrete undercliff walk, which officially starts at Black Rock, extending to Salt Dean through Rotting Dean, is another form of coastal protection to preserve the cliffs. At Rotting Dean, there are large rock groins found which are used to capture the long short drift creating a small beach area. The long term technical policy from New Haven Harbour to Peace Haven is to manage the realignment of the coast by allowing natural processes along the cliff face. However, in order to preserve the main assets at New Haven Port which is a quite flat area, the breakwater was constructed to hold the beach in place and allow for sea vessels to enter into the port. Further along at the New Haven breakwater is the Seaford Seafront. This beach is a great example of beach recycling, which is when sand that has been moved due to longshore drift is transported back to its original location on the beach. The beach has one large terminal groin at the eastern end collecting all the longshore drift. The beach is then recharged one maybe two times a year by employing contractors that move back the beach collected at the eastern groin to the western end next to the New Haven breakwater. The imported shingle is very successful at absorbing the wave energy and does not allow the waves to get too high, thus protecting coastal settlements nearby. A lot of the time for coastal engineers, an option is to not do anything and let nature take its course and where most of the southeast England is either built up or protected through sea defences. Berlin Gap and the Seven Sisters have remained unspoiled thanks to the long history of National Trust East Sussex Council ownership, leaving it to be an example of natural erosion. Here, the white chalk cliffs erode faster than any other part of the coast due to constant wave action and water freezing within the cliffs that produce expansion and instability. The cliffs erode at a speed of 0.7 meters every year, taking with it the infrastructure of some buildings. Shingle and flint, which is found inside the chalk cliffs and make up most of the beach material due to the chalk eroding faster than the flint, are the only natural protection that the cliffs have against the erosion. Eastbourne's beach main form of protection is through wooden groins made from green heart timber and shingle, which was imported from the Isle of Wight to recharge the beach. The £21.5 million development is thought to be the largest coastal protection scheme in the UK employing timber groins. It was decided after the old groins had become inadequate due to heavy storm events in the late 1980s which caused significant reduction in beach levels, wave and shingle overtopping the defences, flooding and damage to seafront properties. Another option at the time was appraised as an offshore breakwater yet overruled due to heavy damage to the environment at high costs. The groins experienced longshore drift predominantly from west to east, yet were designed to manage drift from both directions due to storm causing east to west drift. The timber groins significantly reduced the longshore sediment transport and cover over one mile of beach and are constructed from greenheart timber as the wood is resistant to coastal weathering. The entire project of groins installation along the whole frontage and the renourishment of the beach with around 1 million tons of shingle was completed in 1999. Pevensey Bay uses a different scheme to protect their coast. It is a 9 km stretch of beach that is a part of the first and only sea defense scheme in the world funded as a public-private partnership. 
At the end of the 1990s, many of the beach's 150 groins has reached the end of their useful life and a 1 in 20 year storm may have seen the embankment fail. Due to the 17,000 properties at risk of flooding, the environmental agency looked at an alternative funding through partnership with the private sector and in 2000 awarded a 25 year contract to a consortium of four different contractors. The initial work required importing 200,000 meters cube of shingle dredged from the banks of nearby Hastings and Littlehampton to restore the shingle bank. Now every year the beach is replenished by a specially commissioned dredger taking shingle from nearby banks and depositing the material at the western end of the bay. About a minimum of 20,000 meter cube of shingle is provided every year to maintain the beach. The two core requirements are that there should be 2 million meter cube of shingle distributed over the 9 kilometer long bay and that the shingle bank should have a minimum width of 22 meters at its crest. Coming into Hastings, the first thing to notice is the rebuilt pier, which in 2010, 95% of the superstructure was destroyed by a fire. The 144 year old structure is now open again after 14.2 million pound investment in hopes to attract tourists to the area. Further east of the pier, along Hastings Beach, concrete groins are found and even further along, a large breakwater is seen which acts as a large groin protecting the fish harbour. Due to the soft sand located at Hastings, cliff retreat and falling rock are common. As seen in January 2014, when the cliff failed due to the force of a storm that had been battering the south coast. This is the end of the video blog. I hope you have enjoyed it and found it informative. Yeah.